What's up, YouTube fans? Lan Analyst here back with another video, and today I am here with another video for you guys. A little late video, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, very uh, excited to bring you all this video today. Um, so let's get right into it. This is a video I'm gonna be trying to predict. I'm gonna try to predict based off of accurate stats and information, um, based off of you know me doing uh, just. Uh, a lot of research on the teams and the stats and stuff so here it is my standings and my projected records and i'm gonna try to you know make this a little shorter than my eastern conference uh standing prediction video but we'll see all right so with the first seed in the eastern i'm sorry in the western conference uh i have the golden state warriors yes now why the Golden State Warriors? I think a year with Clay and those guys with with Kam uh, uh, with Kaminga and uh, and Wiseman coming back fully healthy, um, with Draymond obviously and Wiggins and those guys, you know they, they lose uh, Gary Payton, which I thought you know was a, a key loss, uh, but bringing in Dante Divincenzo, who I think can really come in and, and shoot and play a big part. Um, a, a, along with uh, Jermichael Green, who, who I uh, like a, a lot. And so, you know, I think that they're just going to be the number one seed. Do I think they're going to win the title? No. But I do think they have a chance, uh, and I do think that they will be the number one seed. That being said, I have them at 60-22 and 22 for this year. I think that they're going to be a hot team that is – that is just going to dominate the the regular season and the Western Conference. With the two seed, I have now this is based off the health. So these teams stay healthy. This is definitely who I think can be in this order. Number two, I got the LA Clippers. The LA Clippers. The Clippers are a team that I feel like got so much better uh, by health and just by adding. They brought back uh, Batum, Rocco, uh, Zubak, and, and a couple other uh, guys. They reached an agreement with Amir Coffey. Uh, they have Terrence Mann and Luke Kennard and Marcus Morris and Reggie Jackson uh, and Norman Powell, who who they uh, acquired um, in, in the trade to send Bledsoe uh, and a couple other guys um, to Portland. You know, and you know their team is loaded, and then you, and then after all those guys, then you add PG and Kawhi, who they could have went to the finals if they were both healthy, um, in in the series against Phoenix, and then you add John Wall, a guy that that team along with just to mess with all the other guys who they didn't have, and who will get a chance to see a full year with Covington and Norman. Powell. So the team is going to look very well, um, and they have a lot of depth, and they have quality depth. They, in my opinion, they have. Uh, if not the best coach in the NBA, um, in, in Ty Lu. So I, I think that, um, yes, I, I think that the Clippers are going to be uh, at, at the two seed at 59 and 23. Uh, at three, again, based off of health, I think this team also uh, made their roster better. Uh, the Denver Nuggets. Um, listen, we all saw Jamal Murray, Nikola Jokic, and Michael Porter Jr. Uh, in the playoffs, uh, in, in, in the bubble. Uh, they had a very good roster. Then now if you look at the way they would blend with Aaron Gordon. But also, a big problem they had last year was their wing depth. They did not have wing depth. Uh, they ran out of wings. Uh, and they ran out of wings in the playoffs. They were down to one one option, one star in, in the playoffs. Uh, but I just think with the emergence of Bones Highland, Zeke Naji, um, adding KCP, adding Bruce Brown, uh, having Ish, and then um, also, you know, uh, you know, having Jeff Green as a backup center, but also be getting aggressive and going out and getting DeAndre Jordan, who's not the best, uh, but he's still a big man who can serve in, in that role. If they, if they, you know, if, if push comes to shove, you know, they need to throw him in, in the game, and then getting Ish, Ish Smith, and then uh, they drafted a couple guys who I think um, can can serve a, a, a big role. So. And they brought back a couple of uh, of guys that you know are probably not that noticeable, but I'm, I'm I just think that they made their roster better. They added more depth, 
and um and, and listen and hopefully you know um murray and porter can stay healthy uh and help out Jokic, uh, the two-time back-to-back reigning mvp you know we'll see though i have them at 58 and 24 now let's move to the fourth seed who i think it this strictly depends on fit i think we all know who i'm talking about now after i've mentioned fit um the minnesota timberwolves now I, at first i was not a fan of the uh, Rudy Gobert trade. Draft capital is one thing, you know. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't too much like draft capital unless you're a team that is like that. You know, you're going to be in the lottery or you're going to be hovering around um, mediocrity. You're going to be hovering around first, second round exit or or even playing uh, type, you know, um, play. Then you know. Uh, then I, I'm then then I would be skeptical about giving up first round picks, uh, but when you're not um, around that contention, um, I think that it's okay to give up first round picks that are unprotected. Now, their roster got way better, way better. Okay, a big issue after um, the Gobert trades, they lost some depth. Okay. They, they lost some depth. And, you know, it, 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 the depth that they lost, the, the biggest, the two biggest pieces was Pat Bev, Jerry Vanderbilt. But they also lost a first round pick, Walker Kessler. They lost uh, Malik Beasley, who I like a lot. Uh, and then, you know, some other guys. But, but then you added better depth. Um, so not only do you have Rudy Gobert, Defensive player of the year multiple times, multiple all the m- multiple all star appear- appearances. He just does a great job. I love Rudy, but then you got Rudy with Cat D D Lo, Anthony Edwards, who oh, I think is going to take a big step. You kept Jaden McDaniels, who I love him. You get Kyle Anderson, Bryn Forbes, Austin Rivers. You have Torian Prince still. You still have Jalen Noel and Nas Reed. You get you go out there and get Eric Pascal. Uh, you bring back Nathan Knighty. You go out there and you sign AJ Lawson. So the roster is loaded. It's packed. That's why I think that they're going to be the fourth seed, um, and they're going to have home court advantage to the playoffs. Why they just got better? But that's what Tim Conley does, right? He makes rosters better. He, you know, he, he he's not afraid to take big swings. Uh, and yeah, and I had them projected to go fifty five and twenty seven um, th- th- this year. Now, the team above them, the team below them, I think, uh, will have the same record, but they will lose the tiebreaker uh, against the Wolves, and that's the Phoenix Suns. Now, I could put a couple other teams that are below the Phoenix Suns above the Phoenix Suns at five, but I think that Phoenix, you know, the Phoenix is, all, is always a good regular season team. But I think Phoenix will get out the first or second round. No, I don't. Um, I just don't think they made their roster better. I think everyone else around the, the West got better, and they didn't, but I think they're still going to be a good regular season team. You know, they were they were forced to bring back Aiden. Um, they have uh, Chris Paul and, and Devin Booker and Mikhail and, and a lot of depth. So I think that they're going to be okay. Um, do, do they, uh, you know, do I look at their roster and say, oh, my goodness, we're, we're going to get swept in, in a playoff series by them? No, I don't. Um, I think any team would have optimism they can go in and beat them. Now, by the way, guys, the Western Conference is loaded, packed. So if... One team is excluded from the playoffs that you think is just asinine on why they're excluded or you think that they're too low. I don't think that these teams are like an AFC. Like an AFC usually like, okay, AFC, okay, you'll, you'll likely beat them eventually if you're the one seed. No, I think that these AFCs are very qualified and capable of beating the one and the two seed because that's how good these eight and seven and nine seeds uh, are going to be. So at six, I have the Dallas Mavericks. Now, why are the Dallas Mavericks so low? I think they got better. I I just you just gotta fit you gotta fit in who you know, you gotta fit whatever team in wherever you know you think that they can where, where they are realistically compared to all the other teams that got drastically better. Um, like I said, just because Dallas is a sixty doesn't mean that I think they're gonna have a bad year. I think that their record is gonna be uh, great. Um, I think they're gonna go. Th- 51 and 31. I think they're going to be 20 games over 500. Why six seed? Other teams, you know, other teams are just going to be better, uh, in my opinion. 
Um, but, you know, adding Christian Wood, JaVale McGee, one of the things that uh, I observed when I watched them in the playoffs, and I knew that they were going to have to address, and, and Nico Harrison, their general manager, uh, said they're going to have to improve, which I knew it was rim protection. They had no rim protection. Uh, D- Dwight Powell was terrible on uh, as far as rim protection. Um, they were getting beat on the boards a lot. Um, and they had no one down at the down at the beer rim protector. They got Christian Wood to do that. They got Javale McGee to do that. So I think they added a lot of rim protection. Them at six, at seven. I know you're probably gonna like what? Wow, the Memphis Grizzlies. Why are the Memphis Grizzlies this low? In my opinion, Memphis is now banking on their bench and their depth to be on the newly drafted this year. Now it's an interesting word but what i mean by that is now their depth is more based on the kids who they drafted this year versus you know they lost a guy like d'anthony melton who i think was a big piece um and they brought back tyus jones but i don't the the money they paid him you know i don't think that they just they lost d'anthony melton they lost kyle anderson you know, um, they have Brandon Clark. I'm looking at their roster, and it's like, okay, Desmond Bain, all right, good. John Morant, great. You know, Jaron Jackson Jr., great. Steven Adams is a huge question. You know, Dylan Brooks, I really love Dylan Brooks. I think he can be good for him. I think he's going to be good for him, too. Other than that, I'm looking at the roster. I'm just like, okay, well, I, I you know, um, they're still going to be a, a great team. Don't get me wrong. They're going to be a good team. It's just, okay, they're not going to be better than the teams above them. And I think that that's just going to be the case. I still think they're going to go 50 and 32. Um, moving on to the eight seed, the team that did not make the playoffs uh, last year. I think the Portland Trailblazers. I think the the, the changes they made, are and the additions they made, I should say, uh, the turnover uh, was very good. You know, you, you extended Dame, um, who Dame is great. Um, you extended Anthony Simons. I think that's going to be your backcourt there. You're going to see something different there, more a little bit more defense maybe. <clears throat> you finally got a, a mismatch at, at the four with Jeremy Grant, who I think can be a number two option, who was a number one option, but now you're looking at him could serve a, a three option, which I think is really good for him to average 19 and four. And then you brought back Big Nurk, who I think was really good. I've always been a fan of Nurkic. Um, Josh Hart. Uh, and then you brought in a guy who I really like to blend with all the rest of the guys because they drafted uh, Shaden Sharp, who I think is going to be really good, um, a lottery pick um, to develop with Dame and Anthony and, and and Jeremy Grant and those guys, you know, and they'll, they'll also have some young guys who were holding it down um, th- throughout uh, last season while everyone was kind of out, you know, like Greg Brown and Trenton Watford, and they drafted Jabari Walker, they brought back Drew Eubanks. Uh, Keon Johnson, Justice Winslow, Nasir Little. But a one guy who I really like that they added, that Swiss Army knife, that guy that I think is just going to do really good for them, especially fit that Chauncey Phillips uh, type scheme, is Gary Payton. Gary Payton is a guy who I think is going to come right in, help him out defensively, and, and he's just going to be able to he, he's going to be able to help him. Um, and I think that that's valuable. Um, okay, I think they're going to finish out 48 and 34. 14 games over 500. Moving on to the ninth seed, which I struggled putting them this far, looking at the fight that they put up in the playoffs, the, the New Orleans Pelicans. Them adding Zion back, okay, adding Dyson Daniels. I think, listen, New Orleans got better, folks. I just I just can't I can't put them. I could put them over Portland, but I was like, because I do have them at 48 and 34 too. I just can't put them over Golden State and the Clippers and the Nuggets and the Suns and teams like that. I can't put them over them. But yes, the New Orleans Pelicans are going to be a very good basketball team. I think they're going to be a very good basketball team for 10 years to come uh, with Herbert Jones and Jackson Hayes and Kira Lewis Jr. and Trey Murphy and all those young guys. I think they're going to be a very good team. I, it, like I said, it's just a loaded conference. So just because these teams are, have these teams lower doesn't mean I don't think these teams are going to be good enough. I think that the Pelicans could possibly go to the Western Conference Finals. I truly believe that. But it's just, you know, I don't know. It's just the way it is. Now, the 10th seed in the final playoff contention spot goes to the Sacramento Kings. Yes, that is right. I'm going with the Kings over the Lakers. Why? The Kings got 
better. They got better via trade. The you know the Lakers I think got better. I'll talk about the next, and then I gotta be quick with that because I don't want the, I don't I don't want my video to cut out. But um, but listen, um, the the Kings added okay. Fox and Sabonis is a good pairing. Then you got Harrison Barnes. You added Kevin Herter, my guy. Uh, you got Rich on Holmes as a backup big. I think that's really good. You got Malik Monk, Davion Mitchell, Terrence Davis, Trey Lyles. You added some older veterans, Matt, Matthew Dello de Dova. You added Kent Bazemore. But one guy I really, really like um, who has emerged um, so far is Keegan Murray. Um, Keegan, I think, can develop with Fox and Sabonis, and Davion, and Malik Monk, and, and these guys. I think the Kings are going to be really good. Now the Lakers. The Lakers, I think, can be a very good team. I think they will be a very good team. Anything with LeBron is going to be a competitive, good team. If they can stay healthy, I think that that can change a little bit. But if they don't, but even if they stay healthy, I think they still need a little bit more shooting. They added Lonnie Walker, who I like, but they need they need to trade. They need to go ahead and get the Kyrie trade done. Pick up Joe Harris in that deal. Move the first round picks. Protect him. Um, protect the picks. Move Russ and protected picks down down the road. Get Kyrie Irving, Ky then you have a trio, Kyrie, LeBron, AD. Then you have a shooter, and Joe Harris, with Lonnie Walker now, with Kendrick Nunn, and Juan Toscano Anderson, and uh, Troy Brown, uh, uh, Thomas Bryant, and, and Damian Lee, and, and, and these guys, not Damian Lee, Damian Jones. That's where I think you're starting to get a good a good roster. But until then, uh, until until that until they do that, I think that they're going to be right there at a – at the 11 seed at 44 and 30, I think they're going to have a good season. I think Darvin Ham uh, is very optimistic about it. I just don't see them over overriding the other teams. Uh, and then at and then at 12, I got OKC, Rockets at, at 13, Jazz at 14, Spurs at 15. Uh, but, yeah, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I said I did not want it to be longer than the other video, but it is. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what more videos I want to see down in the comment section below. I would love to take you all's feedback. I will see you guys in the next video, and y'all have a good one.